So today we will be discussing um, about Dilip Chitre. So uh, apart from being an important bilingual writer in Marathi and English, he was also a painter and a filmmaker. His efforts to popularize Marathi poems in the broad spectrum of Indian literature is considerable. His Ekan Kavita or collected poems were published in three volumes in the 1990s. He published an anthology of selected English poems known as As Is, Where Is, is uh, in 2007, which comprised of his poetic endeavors between 1964 and 2007. He also published Shesha, uh, English translation of selected Marathi poems in 2007. He, was, uh, he has also edited an anthology of Marathi poetry from 1945 to 1965. His most famous translation is of the celebrated 17th century Marathi Bhakti poet Tukaram, published as Says Tuka. He was one of the earliest influences behind the famous little magazine movement of the 60s in Marathi. As an editor, he worked with Arun Kolatkar and Ramesh Samarth in the magazine Shabda. He also worked as an honorary editor of the quarterly New Quest, a journal of participative inquiry in Mumbai. He was a member of a three-writer delegation along with Nirmal Verma and U. R. Anant Murthy to the then Soviet Union, Federal Republic of Germany and France in 1980, where he had given lectures and talks. He has also conducted workshops in creative writing and literary translation in Iowa City in the United States. He has written poems like Ambulance Ride, Traveling in a Cage and Felling of the Banyan Trees. As a translator, he has translated Hemant Divate's poems, Virus Alert. He translated the poems of Namdeo Dhasal, the prominent poet of the Dalit Mantha movement, and he named it Namdeo Dhasal, Poet of the Underworld. He also has engaged in documentaries regarding the topic of translating Shakti Chattabadhyay into English. He worked as the director of the Indian Poetry Library, Archive and Translation Center at Bharat Bhavan. His films like Ard Satya, Vijeta and Godam are influential landmarks in the growth of modern cinema in India. His poetry has a distinct style with simplistic words and his writing is sparse and imagery is immense. Um, so now we will be reading uh, Dilip Chitre's Father Returning Home. My father travels on the late evening train standing among the silent commuters, suburbs slide past his unseeing eyes, his shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart. His eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid monsoon night. Now I can see him getting off the train like a word dropped from a long sentence. He hurries across the length of the grey platform, crosses the railway line, enters the lane. His chappals are sticky with mud, but he hurries onwards, home again. I see him drinking weak tea, eating a stale chapati, reading a book. He goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrangement from a man-made world. Coming out, he trembles at the sink the cold water running over his brown hands. A few drops cling to the graying hair on his wrists. His sullen children often refuse to share jokes and secrets with him. He, no, he, will, go, he will now go to sleep listening to the static on the radio, dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren, thinking of nomads entering a subcontinent through a narrow pass. Um, this poem uh, has uh, an interesting, um, it has a myriad tones and myriad uh, ideas which are portrayed as a whole in a canvas. It speaks uh, of the image of a father. Um, the image of a father who is um, uh, embroiled in the regular situations and circumstances of life. Um, basically, um, the side of the father which shows exhaustion a little bit of disillusionment from life and cynicism and shows uh, his uh, little emotions and expectations from his family, uh, specifically from his children. Um, it shows the picture of a, uh, of a very normal father who comes back home with uh, 
books and uh, uh, and eatables back from the office when he's coming back home it is uh, also showing uh, through the eyes of the father a picture of the city um, uh, while he's traveling via train uh, in the platforms he is looking at the city around him he is looking at the people surrounding him and somehow or the other his experiences in the city becomes um, uh, a picture of uh, how the world around him is going around so he is working almost like a camera and uh, uh, perhaps uh, he is also showing one of the uh, uh, characteristics of how uh, in this world where uh, uh, the life is pretty much fast and time is kind of less uh, he has become much exhausted and uh, he is kind of uh, uh, recoursing to uh, small things like uh, listening to the radio and having some tea outside. So, I think that uh, this poem has become a, a better commentary of the normal lifestyle of the middle class people. Uh, hello everyone, today we will be talking about uh, father returning home. I will be making a small uh, references to uh, some of the things that have uh, struck me as a reader. So firstly I would like to talk about how uh, the idea of a person being embro uh, like caught up in day to day activities is very much portrayed in this particular figure of the father coming back from uh, work and you can also see that uh, the way in which his travel is uh, you know like talked about. So you can see that he is one among many other uh, kind of uh, people who are undergoing the same journey. So if you look at uh, him, uh, like the act of him getting off the train, like a word dropped from a long sentence, you can see that it actually means like he's one among many other people doing that on a regular basis. And also you can see that uh, he, uh, the suburbs pass through his unseeing eyes was also pretty interesting because he's too, he, one way of looking at it is that he must be too tired that he's not able to see anything around him and he's too caught up in the day to day activities that he's really, he's not able to see anything and he's just engrossed in whatever he's doing. And also um, the idea of his uh, shirt and pants being soggy and his black raincoat being stained in mud, it's like a day to day person who is really in a hurry and you know you don't have time to take, compose yourself and go on a journey. It's like how you ran, like you daily travel and it's a very harsh way in which you live. And at last she doesn't even realize that these are things that are to be taken care of. You can also see that there's one more place in which his uh, chapels are sticky with mud, but he hurries onwards. He doesn't have time to look at all those other aspects of appearance, etc. He has to carry on with his life. And, and also the idea of graying hair on his wrist also could tell that he's been, uh, you know, he's an aging person and it's been a very long while and like that he's, his mood, uh, like he's, a part of these mundane activities for a very long time and also uh, I think the idea of static on the radio also was pretty interesting because you actually associate it with a kind of uh, a finishing like uh, something that is uncertain if you notice it's not like you don't listen to it's not a program it's actually like a kind of uh, thing that it ha it's like it's almost like an empty thing you wait for it to get over with okay a uh, couple of um, ideas in the poem uh, gives you the conceptual grounding. Uh, in fact, the Lip Chitra is kind of telling you this is how you're going to read this, this is how you should read it. So uh, I'll pick up those uh, phrases. One is um, a word dropped from a long sentence. This man is like a word dropped from a long narrative, a grand narrative. He's not part of that narrative, right? He is estranged. In fact, the word estranged appears uh, in the poem itself. You know, he's summing it up. The poet is summing it up for us. This is the man who is estranged from um, this man-made world, right? And the static, again, is an imagistic way of rendering the nature of his identity, the nature of his experience, his psychological makeup. Right? Static noise on the radio. There is no meaning, there is no program, as Zuma was saying. So, um, this is indicative of his state of mind, his status, uh, his place in society. Right? So, the estrangement is kind of literalized through all these details about mud, sogginess, uh, you know, um, uh, the unseen uh, perspectives of the world going by. Right? So, it's a, um, it's a poem that talks about, you know, 
uh, the, the, the loss of belonging to a world. A reference to books suggests that he is perhaps an intellectual and probably his estrangement stems from the fact that he is too aware uh, in a philosophical sense. He's too aware of this man-made world so that he is unable to be part of this grand machinery. Right? He realizes that he's a cog in the wheel, therefore he's not able to belong to that. And, and that would connect to his uh, dreams about nomads, his ancestors and grandchildren, of nomads entering a subcontinent through a narrow path. So again, what exactly is Dilip Chitra trying to communicate through that vision of nomads entering the subcontinent? So he's going back in time. He's going back in time and trying to trace the evolution of mankind on this subcontinent. So this much awareness of his identity across time is part of the problematic, right? Mm -hmm.